Everyone, my name is Chris Green, and believe it or not, right now you are listening to Adobe's audio enhanced version of what's coming out of my iPhone 12. This is the Voice Memo app. I don't have any audio interface or external microphone plugged in whatsoever. Now I'm going to switch it back to the iPhone 12. So this is what you're typically used to hearing on the Voice Memos app. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the Adobe Audio Enhanced program. And I want to push this thing to the limits to find out how does it handle the acoustic guitar? Is this going to be the future of recording music? Are we done with audio interfaces? Are we done with pro audio gear? Let's find out in today's video. For this video in the comments section, I've been curious to know what experiences you've already had with AI or using some of these audio enhancement tools out there. Uh, let me know any sort of plugins or services that you've been pleased with, or maybe what are your concerns about AI moving forward as technology progresses. I'd be curious to know what you have to say about that. And of course, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Best way to support the channel. I wanna thank you so much for watching. Now let's get moving on ahead with Adobe AI. Now, everything I'm using today is coming from Adobe, and this is all available to you just within a Chrome or web browser. Just do a search for Adobe Audio Enhancement or Adobe Audio Enhancer. I'll put a link in the description. This is a free service, but just so you can see on their Adobe podcast website, they have AI powered audio tools that elevate your voice. So you have different options available, enhancement for speech, they have their studio where you can just record onto the web browser itself. And then you have mic check where it will fix microphone issues before you are recording. All right, so here's what we're looking at here. Enhance spoken audio with just one click. So this is what we want to make use of. I'm gonna to go to where it says tools. I'm gonna to go to enhance speech. It says clean up audio for free with Adobe Podcast AI. Enhance speech makes voice recordings sound as if they were recorded in a professional podcasting studio. So you can listen to a sample if you want, but here is the big kicker. This is a free service to a certain extent, okay? You get 30 minutes of a duration. So if you have an audio file that is longer than 30 minutes, you'll need to chop that down into segments, okay? Uh, if your podcast is running 45 minutes, just take the first 30 minutes, export that, and then drag and drop it into Adobe audio enhancer. Max file size is 500 megabytes, and then you get a one hour total daily limit. So in the example I said before, if you have a 45 minute podcast, you're gonna need to chop off 30 minutes and then 15 minutes and upload those as separate files. Now, once you drag and drop this stuff onto the web browser, it's going to upload the file, it's going to enhance it, and then you'll be able to download it. Now, there's no slider for you to change the intensity of how much is being manipulated in the audio. I think that the free version is plenty acceptable for removing the noise that's in your room, as you've heard earlier in this video. Taking something from an iPhone and making it sound like it was recorded with an SM7B is fantastic. If you wanna go the paid for route, you will be able to adjust how much the audio is being manipulated. So you can decrease the amount if you want to. If it sounds a little too AI for you right now, you'll be able to do that, but it will come with the paid for version. So. Uh, once this thing has been dropped in, you'll be able to download your files and they have already been enhanced. So if you uploaded a file that said, my conversation with Tim, then when you download the enhanced version, it'll say my conversation with Tim enhanced. And that's how you know that's the enhanced version. I will say this, uh, from doing these YouTube videos and things like that, whatever your audio file is, before you upload it to Adobe, treat it as if you would a regular recording, but don't do any noise removal or room removal. Don't do anything like that, but I definitely would say that if you wanna go ahead and drop a few EQ moves, uh, that will be factored into consideration. So if you want to put on a low cut or a high pass filter and roll off some of the rumble, that's totally acceptable. Uh, stay away from limiting Okay, because Adobe is going to mess with things that does make it sound more compressed. So when in doubt, just upload the raw audio without doing any changes. But if you are still using an audio interface or you're using a fancy microphone, you can still use this platform. It's going to take whatever you got and it's gonna make it sound better. And that's the goal. So the iPhone, of course, is probably the worst case scenario. If you're using your iPhone to record a podcast, it's not gonna be the best audio quality experience ever. But if you have an SM7B, that doesn't mean you don't 
use the Adobe Audio Enhancer, it will still enhance an SM7B, of course. This is just disaster worst case scenario. So now let's listen to some of the changes as I was recording the guitar and also singing into the iPhone. So like I was doing earlier in the video, let's just start with the iPhone 12 voice memo app. Right now you're hearing the unaffected version. This is just me speaking into my iPhone 12. So imagine if you're setting up for a podcast or an interview and you don't have an audio interface or any fancy gear laying around, can you use the voice memo app? Well, if you drop it into Adobe Audio Enhanced, basically now you're hearing what Adobe is able to do with the audio file. I've used this in the past. I think that this is a fantastic way to basically make up for what you may be lacking. Now, I've not heard this sound near as good as having something like an SM7B or an audio interface with proper microphones and preamps set up. But you got to admit that we are definitely rolling into the future and this technology is only going to get better and better. So again, I'm going to be switching all throughout this video. You'll see on the screen, whenever I'm switching between the iPhone or the Adobe enhanced version, though I think it's going to be pretty obvious as you're listening to the audio, one's going to sound pretty horrendous. The other one's going to sound pretty usable. And I think that's the big takeaway. So let's push this thing to the limits. Of course, you can take this iPhone, you can take your voice memos app, you can set it on a table nearby. I've got a drum throne with my laptop sitting on top of it. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to keep the voice memos app recording, but I want to try this thing out with the acoustic guitar and maybe in a singing situation. I believe that with Adobe Audio Enhanced, they're mainly focused on making podcast ready vocal tracks. So it's meant for more of a speaking situation, but what would it sound like if you were to record your music with this? So I'm going to set this again, it's on the drum throne. It is just about maybe eight to 10 inches away from the sound hole of my acoustic guitar. I'm not what you would call a professional singer whatsoever, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna sing a little bit. I'm gonna play guitar for a little bit and we'll listen, of course, back and forth to see what Adobe does with this audio. Hit subscribe and maybe like So this video can have a chance In the algorithm's dance Hit subscribe Hit subscribe and maybe like So this video can have a chance In the algorithm's dance Hit subscribe and can So now having heard what Adobe has done with the audio going into my iPhone, here are my thoughts. If you're in a spoken word situation, whether that's an interview and you're doing a podcast with somebody for the convenience of it, if you're sitting down with someone that doesn't want to deal with SM7Bs and having a bunch of setup time, feel free to just take your phone, set it on the table in between you and the person that you're talking to and hit record on the voice memo app. I 100%, unless I'm in a situation where I'm doing like a paid interview or a paid for podcast, uh, I will be reaching for my phone before I'll be reaching for loading up my car with a bunch of expensive equipment, okay? Uh, it just depends on the project. So if a very serious project, something that you're gonna be like making money on or someone that wants to use for their platform that is going to be a money maker, absolutely reach for the iPhone, the voice memo app, drag and drop the audio into Adobe Audio Enhancer. I'll tell you the free version is plenty acceptable, but you are limited to a one hour upload each day. So eventually I, I think that this will be a completely paid for version. Adobe has never been like a cheap company. Adobe is not gonna tell you like, oh yeah, yeah, why don't you just use Photoshop for free, <laughs> right? Uh, it's always a subscription base, so I don't see them changing with this. They're probably in like the guinea pig stage of making sure that this works. And then once they've proven that it works over a certain amount of time, they will be charging for it. That's my guess going forward.
So if you're doing music, can this thing handle the music? No, it cannot. It is basically trying to turn my acoustic guitar into a vocal. You can hear it doing these artifacts that basically sound like auto-tune. It's almost like there's a pitch correction happening, but it's a very specific band of frequencies that Adobe is listening for in the human voice. I'm sure the more that we feed this program, the better it's going to get. My recommendation is to you, uh, I would still try this with a vocal track because when I was singing to the iPhone without my acoustic guitar, it definitely sounded better than what I was getting from the iPhone basic. Okay. Uh, there's no room sound being recorded. I have one of these isolation halo reflection filters. You've seen this from like SE Electronics. It kind of creates like a acoustic foam panel behind your microphone. Uh, it had a better result from Adobe than using that with the SM7B. I think that it was very much an isolated sound. And I can take that vocal track, I can still tune it, I can still EQ it, I can still add reverb if I want to, but it gives you a very controlled vocal and that's very important. So maybe recording all of your music separately and then just go in as your multi-track recording, doing overdubs and things like that. Feel free to just use your iPhone, that would be insane. And it's insane to even say things like that. But uh, music is a no-go right now. I'm sure there are services out there. Let me know in the comments of uh, ones that you've been using. But for right now, this is mainly uh, if you're just uploading a dry vocal or if you're uploading a podcast audio, leave the music out of it. Make sure it's just dialogue and you should be good to go.